In this tutorial, we explore the process of creating a simple web map of cell tower locations in Florida and hosting that map for free via GitHub. We will start by installing the QGIS2 web plugin. Then we set up our data, including which fields will be visible in the web map by using the properties dialog window. We'll also explore the QGIS2 web plugin settings to create and export the web map. Finally, we explore signing up for GitHub, downloading the GitHub desktop client, transferring the files to GitHub, and making those files publicly available for anyone on the web. As always, timestamps are available in the description so you can jump from section to section, as well as data and other resources linked below. Okay, let's get started. Our first step is to make sure that we have the QGIS2 web plugin installed. So we do that by going, of course, to our manage and install plugins, giving it a moment to uh, load, and then we search for QGIS2 web. You can see I've already installed it, but if you haven't, there'll be an install plugin button down here. Click that and then you've got that installed. There's really nothing else to it. We'll explore the various settings that we use in this plugin in a few minutes. Next, we'll go ahead and set up our shapefiles, which really for our purposes means we're just selecting which of the attribute columns are visible in the web map we're going to produce. So we're using uh, just a basic data set here of cell tower locations across the state of Florida from 2019. First thing we're going to go ahead and do is change the name. You can do that by pressing F2. And I'm just going to call this Cell Towers and put 2019 in parentheses to sort of denote what year these cell towers uh, date to. Of course, this video is from 2021. There are likely more cell towers already added in Florida, but this will work for our purposes. So what we next need to do is determine which of our attribute columns we would want to keep. Now, of course, we can go through this and look at our attribute uh, columns here. You would do that, of course, for your own data. I've already determined which ones we're going to keep. Let's go ahead and go into our properties for the cell tower data. And we want to go ahead and click on attributes form. And what this allows us to do is change the attributes for each of our uh, attribute columns. So we only want to keep the licensee call sign location address uh, and location city field visible. We want to change the widget type from text edit to hidden. Okay, so there we've gone ahead and changed most of these to hidden. We've kept a couple license call sign We've hidden most of them though. We want to keep the location address. We want to keep the location city, but the rest are hidden. So now when we click apply and then close, what this means is that those attribute columns will no longer be visible in our web map. Okay, now we're ready to create our web map. So we go to the web drop down menu, select QGIS to web, create web map. We have a number of tabs here that we'll explore. We want to go ahead and in this first tab, Layers and Groups, we want to select Leaflet. Make sure that's selected. It may not be. It's probably Open Layers. Choose it to Leaflet. I find that that works better. We want to go ahead and turn off pop-ups. In this case, for the base map, which is Google Road, there are no pop-ups. We want to leave pop-ups and visible checked. Of course, we want these to be visible in the final web map. You could choose Cluster and click the Update Preview. And this just produced sort of naturally grouped clusters that as you zoom in you can sort of see these uh, form uh, coming out may not work properly here in the preview but you get the idea I'm gonna leave this turned off for our purposes but you might want to use that the next thing we want to do in this tab is change the fields here to an inline label and what that does is when we click a point it basically oh we have to update first it basically tells us what each of these are right so it gives us a label next we want to go to appearance add abstract I leave that alone I leave most of these alone I don't geolocate user or anything layer search you could make it so that a user could search one of the attribute fields we're not going to worry about that right now I'm going to go ahead and give them an imperial measure tool. What that basically does is you can see here, it allows them to measure distances. They can create a new measurement. Uh, show pop-ups on hover, update the preview again. What that does is it means you don't have to click as you move over these points. It, it basically displays the same things. 
We want to make sure and shift template from canvas size to full screen. That means that we can embed this map, which will be hosted on GitHub in another website. So that's useful. For the extent, we want to change this to fit to layers extent. If we update the preview, we can see this brings us to the entire extent of all the available layers. You can fiddle around with the max zoom levels. In this case, they mirror basically uh, the Google Maps zoom levels. Next, we want to go to export. We want to export it to a folder. What I'm going to do is just go into a normal temp folder that I have and just select that folder. Finally, with the settings, we want to make sure preview on startup is checked. That means it'll open for us automatically in our web browser when we finish exporting it. We can go ahead and do a final update preview. This looks pretty good. I like the way this is performing. This is a general idea of how this will work. It's not always perfect, uh, but it generally will match what gets spit out when we click the export button. And here we have the finished map uh, opened in a local file, right? Uh, location in our web browser. And basically this is what we're going to now upload to GitHub and make it freely available to anybody on the internet. Next, we need to go ahead, if you don't have one, create a GitHub account. There's a direct link to this page in the description below. It's pretty self-explanatory how you create your own GitHub account. Next, once you've created that account, you'll need to go ahead and download the GitHub for desktop install file. And once that's finished downloading, we'll go ahead and go through the process of setting this up. We've started updating the GitHub desktop. As you can see, it's already installed. It sort of ups, uh, updates itself. Uh, I've previously installed it, so you might have to go ahead and log in, of course, right? Options, accounts, sign in continue with browser and I'll just sign in then it'll ask if it can use the application say it can and now you're signed in and with that we're now ready to go ahead and create a repository on github and if you're not familiar with GitHub, there's a lot of great help files and sort of tutorials and instructions about how GitHub works, um, how its structures function, and so forth. I'm not going to go through all of that. This is just sort of a quick uh, and dirty tutorial to get you to the point where you can put your web maps online. But I would encourage you to explore GitHub's features more uh, in more detail because they're really robust and really cool and actually for heritage, archaeology, history folks, they offer a lot of cool potentials. So as we go ahead and transfer our files on our local machine to the cloud, to GitHub, we need to do a couple things locally. Now I've created a GitHub folder in my documents folder and what we need to do is create a subfolder here to host all of those map folders that were spit out with the QGIS to web plugin. So I'm going to go ahead and call this. You can call it whatever you want to, but I'm calling it Florida Towers. And what I'll do is copy all of these files into this folder. And now we're ready to go ahead and use that to create a new repository on GitHub. And the way we're going to do that is with our GitHub desktop client. So we want to go to File, Add Local Repository. And of course, we want to navigate to the repository uh, path. So of course, we'll go to Florida Towers, select this folder. This directory does not appear to be a Git repository. Would you like to create a repository? Yes, we would. So click on Create Repository. I'm going to go ahead and leave the name. The description is going to be location of cell towers in Florida. Maybe I'll put 2019. We do want to initialize this repository with a readme. You don't have to do that. I do it. It's good practice. We'll leave the defaults for git ignore license. We'll click create repository. That'll take a moment and it's done. We are now in Florida Towers, which is our new repository. We could look at the history. We can see all these files. All that's done is it's basically added those QGIS to web files in this folder to this repository. Now, of course, this is just sitting on our local computer. We haven't uploaded it to GitHub yet. So that's where we'll click on publish repository. 
we'll go ahead and leave the name, the description. We can unclick the keep this code private and then click the publish repository. And so this will take a moment or two depending on the ultimate size of all these files. It's done pretty quickly here because we've got very small files, but if you were using large rasters or what have you, it could take much longer. Anyway, now we're ready to go back to github.com, log in, and make these files public for anyone on the web. So when you log into your GitHub account, you'll see your repositories listed here on the left. I have more than what's in this tutorial, of course. What we're gonna do is click on the one that we just created, the Florida Towers one. And we want to go into, we can scroll through here, we can see the readme, not much there. You can edit it, add all sorts of stuff if you want to. We wanna to go to settings, we wanna go ahead and scroll all the way down to GitHub pages. We wanna choose our main branch and we wanna click save. It's basically reloaded the page and what we'll wanna do is go down here as we scroll down and see your site is ready to be published at Da, 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 my github uh, slash Florida Towers. We want to make sure the repository is set to public. It probably already is, but go ahead and basically reset it the same way. And you'll have to type this in, right? Once you've done it, click I understand. It will reload. And now what will happen? Yes, we have this notice up here, but trust me, you may have to do that anyway. As we scroll back down, what'll happen is if we click this link, we'll see our web map freely available on GitHub. So there you have it. You can now share this address, right? I can get rid of this a little bit. This address right here is all you need to share with somebody, embed in another website with maybe an iframe HTML tag, uh, and share this map with anybody in the world. So that's it. You've now created a web map using the QGIS to web plugin. You've determined which attribute columns are visible in the web map, and you've exported it to GitHub so anybody can, can view it. As always, links to location of data are in the description. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get future updates. Until next time, keep mapping the past, or in this case, cell phone towers.